morning. Good to see you this morning. Any first time visitors? Anybody know? Put your hand in. Got a gift for you. You want a gift, I guess. All right. So it's good to see y'all like this morning. Not, not you, Dan. Big, strong man over there. I fixed him up with a giant print Bible last week. Brought it back to him this morning. And I said, what's the matter? He said, it's too heavy. <laughs>
on April 1st at 6 p.m. And uh, make sure you sign up for uh, the potluck, uh, which will be bringing. And uh, anything else? Yeah, if you have to pay $15 per person, please uh, get that money to Miss Amanda. Easter egg hunt, April 9th. And the time is still to be determined. And uh, you can go ahead and please bring plastic uh, eggs filled with candy. We'll leave in the vestibule by April 2nd. Uh, please see uh, Kim Shepard, or, uh, Tricia, or, or Kathy if you have any questions. And the latest trip, uh, North Carolina, April 7th. Leaving the church at 7 a.m. Any other announcements? All right. Birthdays and anniversaries had one this past week. Come forward this time.
If Miss Asia, she sings, we have to sing through her in a special way. Be careful of you all the glory and honor and praise you want you to do. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Oh, rest in your 
you, what can you do if you can't laugh at church? No. <laughs> Restart, okay. <laughs> Sovereign hand 
say amen. 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 Let's stand. Now that you have stood, we have Genesis chapter number five. Say amen. Amen. All right. I'm at this point. I'm really impressed with you. And uh, let me tell you a little story real quick. It won't take, it won't take just a second, I promise. Two things. We had a, a, a yesterday, we had some, uh, what a Friday. We had a package brought to the, uh, sent to the house. And I picked it up. I got it out of the mailbox. And uh, I went in the house and asked Lynn. I said, what in the world? I said, what have you ordered from this place? I don't even know the name of the place. And she said, I don't remember. So I opened it up. You know what it was? It was Barrett's Christmas socks. <laughs> <laughs> I thought better late than never, but my goodness. He, you know, they could have said, I paid for them and they paid for some more. You don't pay for one of them. You do know that. <laughs> the UPS lady came by, or man came by. I don't know which one it was. And uh, they've been coming by quite often, and Cowboy's been having conversations with them. And uh, I, I, he, he don't like them. I can just tell you that right now. I went out to get the box that they left, and it had a dog biscuit on top. <laughs> She even straightened up wind's trees that can't even stand by themselves even though they're wired to the house. They end up like this all the time. And uh, and left. And I opened the door and he's growling. He saw that thing. He snatched that thing right up off the box. And he quit growling. He was happy. He was just munching away. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11. Look at verse number 5. We're going to look at verse, we're going to read verse 6 because this is very important uh, to read along. We've been looking at the heroes of faith in Hebrews 11. Verse 5 says, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this, I hope you notice his testimony. He had this testimony that he pleased God. Yeah. Enoch pleased God. What a testimony to have that uh, somebody could say that we please God. At Genesis chapter number 5, if you look there with me, look at verse number 21. It says, And Enoch lived sixty and five years and began Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he began Methuselah three hundred years and he began sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were three hundred and sixty-five years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Beautiful portion of Scripture. Same thing basically repeated in Hebrews 11. And uh, just so much that we'll see, hopefully, prayerfully today. God bless us today. Thank you for the good music. Thank you for just the encouragement that you've given to each and every one of us. Lord, I pray today that... Uh, you would speak to all of our hearts. I believe every child of God in the building needs to hear what the Holy Ghost has to say today from this portion of Scripture and a few others. Lord, I also believe that every person here that's not saved, there may be people here today that's been coming for a while that's never trusted Christ. And I pray, oh, blessed Holy Spirit, that you'd have your will and way Work in and out of these pews, touching each and every life as only you can do. And God save that one as near as hell this morning. Touch that Christian that has a specific need today. It may be they're going through sorrow. It may be they're going through a difficult time of, of trouble or health or uh, physical problems or financial problems. God, whatever it is, I just pray you touch them in a special way today. Give them the comfort of the blessed Holy Spirit of God as He wraps His sweet loving arms around us and just encourage us in the walk in which we walk with the Lord Jesus. So God bless this time now as we look into the Scriptures. Just meet with us in a special way and I'm going to thank you. I'm going to praise you. For it's in Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Last week we looked that uh, a sinner can only enter into the presence of a holy God as he evidences his faith in the Lord. This morning we're going to be looking at Enoch. And uh, faith sets aside all human efforts 
<laughs> Instead, it trusts only in the revelation made in God's Word. Let me tell you something. There's no human effort possible that can get you into heaven. There's not a thing you can do that to please the Lord other than repenting and trusting the Savior. You can give all the money you want to give. You can do all the work you want to do. You can be a, a, in the ministry and helping in all the things of the church and everything else. But if you've never been saved by the grace of God, it means absolutely nothing to the Lord. What He wants, He said in Luke 19.10, For the Son of Man has come to what? Look at all your good works. No, He said come to seek and to save that which was lost. And I'm going to tell you something this morning. If you're here today and you're not saved, I advise you, I get right with God this morning. I trust Him as my personal Savior. I wouldn't walk out of here knowing my next footstep would be a footstep straight into the pits of hell. I'd make sure those things were right. And so I want to encourage you this morning. If you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, then you need to come and let us take a Bible and show you how to know Him in a personal way. Genesis chapter 5 makes some sad reading until you come to verse 21. We are introduced to Enoch, the seventh from Adam, who walked with God, notice that, and lived each day in holy fellowship with Him. Let me ask you a question. Do you live each day in holy fellowship with the Lord? You say, well, preacher, that's the way I start out. How do you finish that day? Well, you just don't know what, yeah, I know. You don't have to explain to me what's going on. I understand. I'm a human too. But do we live in that kind of relationship with Him? Adam and Eve walked with God until sin came in and broke that fellowship between the Creator and the creature. And that was and when unbelief has robbed man of fellowship with God, faith is the link how we are restored in the fellowship with Him. Enoch's faith enabled him to enjoy this fellowship that he had with God. It wasn't anything special. He's an ordinary man. Not anything special about him. But he learned to walk with God and realize that walking with God is the greatest thing that ever happened to him in his life since his salvation. The only thing we're told about Enoch is this. He walked with God. Nothing else. What a testimony. Enoch walked with God every day of his life. I, I'm going to try to emphasize that this morning because I want you to understand that's exactly what he did. And, uh, of course, that's the greatest, I believe, the greatest achievement for anyone is to live in this earth and to have fellowship with God himself. Do you have fellowship with the Lord? Because I have it. I'm talking about are you walking in fellowship? You can read the Bible and pray have fellowship with God, but are you walking with Him? Are you walking in that close relationship where at any time where you're going or what you're doing, you can stop for a moment and say, God, I want to thank you for being so good to me. I thank you for helping me along my way today and being a blessing to me until I've gotten to this place right here. And I just want to keep going. I just want to thank you because I love you, but you love me the more than I love you. Amen. Say, preacher, you do that, there's nothing wrong with it. One of these days, I'm going to get excited in Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to lose all my religious dignity. <laughs> and I'm going to get as sanct unsanctified as I can be and, have, and start a camp meeting. Can you imagine on the news? There's a camp meeting going on in Walmart and Christiansburg. Yeah. They quit selling anything. People have gone in there and busted all the beer bottles. Hallelujah to God. I ain't going to air this tomorrow. <laughs> all through the centuries, men and women know what it is to walk with God. I, I believe today in our society, millions of ordinary people understand what it is to walk with God mm -hmm. and be in that blessed, enjoy that blessed fellowship with the Lord. I'm going to, I'm going to give you a couple of questions. I'm going to try to answer them for you this morning. Number one, what is this fellowship like? What is it like? What, uh, when does it begin? How does it go on? How does it end? 
So far as this life is concerned, well, let me just say this. The first characteristic of the fellowship of faith is what are we, the, what we, this, the, what were the, the distinguishing marks of Enoch's walk? What were they? Number one, he walked with God. That's pretty simple, isn't it? And uh, the Bible emphasizes, I want you to notice this. There's a word here that's emphasized in, uh, in verse number 24. And Enoch walked with. That's a key word. He walked with God. And uh, he didn't walk independently, but in dependence upon God. Every day of his life, he walked with God. That implies he walked in the same direction as God walked. He didn't walk this way. He didn't walk that way. He didn't turn around and walk that way. Whichever way God was going, he was right beside him walking with him and staying in that close fellowship. And they were at the same speed. Everything. Look over the book of Amos. Turn over there if you can find it real quick. Amos. Go past Joel and you'll find it. There it is. Amos chapter 3. They had this fellowship. His life was in harmony with the Lord. His step was in harmony with the Lord. Amos chapter 3. Amos is speaking. He says, Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. And then he asks this question. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Let me ask you a question. He's telling Israel, he said, I'm fixing to punish you because I'm here and you're here, but we are not walking together. We're walking separately. And he says, how can, can two walk together except they be agreed? And I, I believe with all my heart, God's basically saying the same thing to us. He said basically the same thing to Enoch. And Enoch, as far as I know, is the only one that walked like he walked with God and was taken out of this world. I thank God that we have the illustration in the Bible of a real man that walked with God. He lived in the constant presence of of God and in the center of His will is a walk that's well pleasing to God. Flip over to Hebrews. I know you got Hebrews right there. Verse number, chapter number 11. Verse number 5. Look there with me. By faith it was translated. Now that's a good word right there. I'm going I'm to be one of them one of these days. Amen. That's just another way of saying rapture. By faith in it was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Is it possible for you and I to know we're living day by day in a way which is pleasing to God? Does our daily walk in this life please God? Are we pleasing God at work? Are we pleasing God when we're going shopping? Are we pleasing God when we're talking to people? Are we pleasing God in everything we do? Are we pleasing God at work? Are we pleasing God with doing what our bosses tell us to do? Are we pleasing God as we're doing what our moms and dads tell us to do? Amen. Are we pleasing the Lord in those things? So I'm not talking about kids. You've got to please God somehow. If you're going to walk with him, you've got to be pleasing in his sight. And I'm going to tell you something. Very few Christians today are even trying to walk with God anymore. It's just come to the place where, well, I'm, I'm going to make it so I'll just do what I can to get on and get along. It's possible. The Bible, God has told us some things which are pleasing to him. Let me give them to you. We can only please Him if we're saved. You're not saved. You're not pleased God doing nothing. You can come to the church and read your Bible, jump and shout, but if you've never trusted Him as your Savior, you're not pleasing nobody but your own self. You're not pleasing God. You want to know why? He don't know you as one of His children. He created you in His image. Yes, He did. 
but he does not know you spiritually as one of his children. Right. So the first thing before we can ever please God, we've got to know him as our personal Savior. These living in the flesh, Romans 8 tells us this, these living in the flesh cannot please God. We're living. We can only please him if we're living our lives separate from sinful and doubtful things. Look at 2 Timothy chapter number 2. Turn over there with me. I want y'all to I want you to read these verses. I want you to turn in your Bibles. I want to hear your pages flopping and flipping. I want you, I want to know. I, I don't care whether you ever look at me or not, but if I'm reading from God's Word, I want your head down in that book reading right along with me. Amen. It'll help you. So okay. what if I you think about this? What if I misquoted one of the verses? Mm -hmm. You go home and start memorizing the way I said it, then you look at the Bible and say, well, what preacher made a mistake on that? Read your Bible. Listen, that's why we bring our Bibles to church. Right, right, right. Is to read along with what the preacher said. Yeah, yeah. I, I really, let me just read these to you real quick. Look at 2 Timothy chapter number 2. Look at verse number 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Yes. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. I will please him, that's my Savior, who has chosen me by the grace of God to be one of his soldiers. He has done the same thing for each one of you out there. He said, well, I'm not a preacher. You're a child of the king. You're a soldier in God's army. You may be the lowest buck private they ever have in there, but bless God, you're in the army of God, and he's got a place for you to go. If you know anything about the military, you've got to start at the bottom and work up. Right. And that's exactly what we're doing with God. He said, preacher, how do you work up? Read your Bible, the old song says, pray every day. Let God, the Holy Ghost, speak to your heart. Let Him do in your life what He wants to do and not what you want to do. Allow Him to take charge. He's, we can only please Him by giving our lives to holy to Him. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable servant. Listen, that's my reasonable service to say, God, I remember the time I came to that place that I had surrendered, but not 100%, and I came to a place where I surrendered 100%, and I said, God, here I am. You have all of me. Do whatever you want to do with it. Send me wherever you want to send me. I just want to know that I am going to be one of your servants, and I am 100% yours. Can I tell you something? You need to do the same thing. That's not just for preachers. Uh, not just for missionaries or Sunday school teachers or deacons or trustees or any of those things. That's for every child of God. God wants us to give ourselves wholly unto Him by obeying Him. Colossians chapter 3 verse 20 says, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. You want to please God? You obey mom and dad. I know a lot of kids probably don't want to hear that, but I'm going to tell you something. I get tired of smart mouth kids. I'd probably been put in jail a long time ago for smacking the daylights out of somebody else's child. I grew up knowing better. I'm going to tell you, if they sass their mother, she's, she'd get with them. She didn't say, man, well, me or Danny gets so That's what my mother did, not when. So I'll take this thing in hand right now. she deal with it. I would, all I'd do is hear about what they got. Oh, I said, praise God. Give it to them again. Yeah, what do you need to do? I hear some of these kids talking to parents like they're some kind of low-down dog. I'm going to tell you something. We can only please him by obeying him. And it was like any other man who walked on the face of the earth. But he had faith in God. This brought him into the fellowship of God and made him well-pleasing right. to the Lord. The commencement when, his fellow, when this fellowship of faith started was Enoch always a believer? 
Did he always walk with God? No. Go back to Genesis 5. Y'all have that one ready right now. Y'all have a finger right in that one. Genesis 5. Look at verse number 21. He that lived 60 and 5 years and began Methuselah. He is 65 years old. And then the next verse, this is a blessed verse, and Enoch walked with God. Notice this, after he begat Methuselah, 300 years, and he begat sons and daughters. He didn't say 65 years old. Now, he lived to be 365. And I don't know any of us men or women around here that's pushing for that. that, that a lot of them live 6 and 7 and 8, who knows how long. I'll just be happy to go to heaven in one piece. Amen. <laughs> it began after Methuselah was born. You say, well, what is the answer to the question in John chapter 3 and verse 4 where Nicodemus asked the Lord, can a man be born again? Can a man enter the second time his mother be used to him? There's an the answer right there. Enoch was 65, and he'd already been born physically. At the age of 65, he got born again spiritually. There's two births for the child of God. I got born a long time ago. And I got saved about a long time ago as well. But I, I, that's my two births. I had a physical birth, and I had a spiritual birth. And uh, I just thank God for both of them. Amen. I couldn't have one without the other. Man can be born with his own. He can be born again. That's what he's telling you. Think of the joys and the pleasures of a life led to it that led to a man's salvation. I think possibly it could have been Methuselah's birth that led Enoch to start a walk with God. Romans chapter two verse four said, "God's goodness leads to repentance." I think Enoch started when he started walking with God. Here, things begin to change in his life. But sometimes it's not just the joys of life. Sometimes it can be the sorrows and the afflictions of life that lead to a man's conversion. I, I've seen people saved in, in numerous in, in different situations. I, I remember in England, I've seen people saved at funerals here in America. But everybody in England got cremated. Nobody got buried but Jews and those that were members of the Church of England. So if you wasn't a baptized member of the Church of England, they're going to make dust out of you. That's all it was to it. You could not buy a grave because they didn't have that much land. And everybody got buried over there. If they got buried, it was a stacking situation. You know, you could stack one-on-one -on -one here, but over there, I don't know how many stack. Some of them, they might have dug all the way down to the English Channel, push one out and put another one in. I don't know what they did. I just know that when we did the ceremony, I told y'all about the first one, I'm going to go through that again. But I remember standing outside and the guy got out of this black car hearse, had windows around it so you could see the casket, had the body in it. He put his top hat, he'd take his top hat off, you know, one of them big top hats, and he'd take that thing off and he'd put it under his arm. Walk out in front of that hearse, and then he'd begin almost like a death walk, but the guy behind him was already dead, so there wasn't nothing to do it. And he started walking. And that hearse followed him all the way down to where we were going to have the service. And they'd take him inside, and they would set him up on a, on a pedestal, big, beautiful marble pedestal. And uh, I, I remember they used to have me. The pedestal was over here. And all the people were out that way. And I'm standing here looking across the platform at the organist on the other side. And I thought, I don't care about preaching to him. I don't know him. I don't like him anyway. <laughs> and uh, so I, I came out from behind the pulpit. I know they probably thought this guy's lost his mind. And I turned toward all the family. For about 20 minutes, I just had myself the time of my life. I just enjoyed preaching the gospel to them. People got saved. People got saved in crematoriums. They put their hand up. I say, you, you're going to end up dying and going to hell, and the fire in there is not near as hot 
as the one you're going to. And I tell you something, it's still as hot today as it was then. Amen. And I'd ask them if they want to trust Christ for Savior, they put their hand up. We talk to them. We lead them to the Lord. I'm going to tell you something. Funerals are the greatest place in the world to preach the gospel. Amen. And, and if you don't want me to preach the gospel at yours, then don't ask me to come. Because <laughs> I'm going to. I've just decided I'm going to do what I want to do from now on. I'm just that old and I'm just that senile. But I'm doing what I want to do. I will preach the truth wherever I go. And I believe that's vitally important to each and every one of us. Gwen's going to preach my funeral. We all going to get it when she's going. <laughs> The Bible, says, the Bible says you may be in a great place of difficulty. Look with me in Isaiah chapter 55. God's brought you there in order that you may turn to Him for help and deliverance. God takes us into places, difficult places sometimes, to wake us up. He takes us there and shows us what we need to be doing, why we need this, and that's exactly what he's doing here. It's only because he loves us. And he wants us to seek him and find him and enjoy his fellowship. Do you enjoy fellowship? I don't think some of you know what enjoying fellowship is. I enjoy fellowship with God, and I don't care if anybody else is around or not. It just don't matter to me. I, I like a one-on-one -on -one audience with him anyway because he blesses me and there ain't nobody else around trying to get one of my blessings. Amen. Isaiah chapter number 55. Look there with me. Look at verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord and he will have no sin. Mercy upon him to our God, and He will abundantly pardon. Amen. God's not only in the saving business, but also in the pardon business. Right. I'm glad we can go to Him whenever we have a difficulty. <laughs> why, why don't we just turn to Him now? Why don't we start today and say in our hearts, God, I want to walk with You. I don't know if I'll be able to walk like Enoch walked with You, but I want to do the best that I can to walk with You side by side, going the same speed as You're going. Go the same way that you're going. And whenever you turn to the left, I'll just turn right there with you. But I, I don't, I want to be dependent upon you and not be independent of you. <laughs> Where we get ourselves in trouble when we, we decide, well, bless God, I'm going to do it this way. Help yourself. If you're just about that nutty, help yourself. You walk independent from God and I can promise you, you're going to fall flat on your face. We need to be dependent. He wants us to be dependent upon Him. How long did He even walk with God? Let me tell you, just as long as He is on this earth. I, I can see, I can hear Him now. Some of His relatives. Y'all might have some like this too. I have some. When I got saved, got baptized on Wednesday night, my sister found out about it. His wife did her part. She has taken him out of the Presbyterian church and made him a Baptist. And it's her part. And we don't like her anymore. That's my two sisters. That's my two sisters. They don't want to You know what Gwen said about that? Who cares? She said, I didn't make him change. God did. Yeah. He is sitting in a church pew on Wednesday night, sitting next to Gwen on the end, had my arm around her, just kind of laid back and enjoying myself and looking around, and all of a sudden, wham! Yeah. She had to raise her hand. Something got a hold of me. The invitation started. We stood up. I looked at her. I looked at that man up there that's been doing the preaching. <coughs> Off I went. Amen. She sat down in front of me. She came up her name. She said, do you know what you're doing? I said, yeah, I don't want to do it. I wouldn't be up here if I didn't know what I was doing. Can I tell you something? I didn't know what I was doing. I joined a Baptist church. <coughs> 
guy took a Bible. He said, why are you coming this night, tonight? I said, I'm going to join this church. He said, wonderful. He said, he's got his little car there. He's going to run. He said, and where are you transferring your membership from? I said, Northside Presbyterian Church. He put that car down picked his Bible up. <laughs> he said, let me show you how we join around this place. I thought this was kind of strange, but glory to God, I'm going to go right along with it. He said, what I'd say that he had given me all my verses on security and everything. He said, you know, the Bible tells you that what you're supposed to do now is you're supposed to be baptized. I said, I've been baptized once. He said, how? I said, they throw water on top of my head. He said, that ain't, that ain't it. That ain't it. I, said, I said, what do you want me to do? He said, we're going to make your profession of faith. And I said, okay, what's that? Man, listen, he's explaining this stuff to a dumb Presbyterian that has no idea. I've just been watching it. He tells me what I need to do, how I need to respond to the preacher. And, uh, and then I went around back and got baptized. And uh, wonderful night, wasn't it, Queen? She's as happy as a pig in slump. She's so happy. I was happy. My sisters were mad as a devil. But who cares? That night I met Jesus Christ through the blessed Holy Ghost of God as He convicted me of my sin and showed me I need to repent of it and trust Jesus as my Savior, and that's exactly what I did. I didn't become a Baptist. I became a child of the King. Amen. That's just the way God wants to say. He just wants to have that kind of fellowship with us. Listen, Enoch's walk lacked with God last, did last. I'm sure some of his family said it'll only last. It's a nine-day wonder. I'm sure that's what they said about me because I was probably worse than Enoch ever thought about me. But think about this. He walked with him for 300 days. I'm sorry, 300 years. 300 years. You know what that is? That's 109,500 days. That's 2,626,000 hours. I wasn't going to go further than that because I, I don't know if I had enough paper to put for the seconds and minutes. But he spent time. Can you imagine that? He spent time side by side for 300 years walking with God. And God just decided, hey, it's just about time. I think I'm just going to take you home. Yeah. Amen. The Bible says he walked with God and he was not. Amen. Yeah. 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 See, what are you doing, preacher? I was not. And God will reach down and take my hand and take me. Well, I guess I ain't walked close enough. God took him. Fellowship. What kind of fellowship was that? Here's a man who got saved at the age of 65 because he had a boy that was born. And then for the next 300 years, he walked with God, did everything God wanted him to do, stayed right next to God, wherever God led him, whatever God said to him, whatever he told him to do. He said, I'll do it. Whatever you want me to do, Lord, I'll do it. And when the time comes for you to go to heaven, I'm going to take care of you. I, I believe with all my heart, Enoch probably skipped a few days. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about skipping the day. I'm talking about skipping through the day. You know what I'm saying? Because he was happy. Yeah. Wouldn't it be something that you knew you were walking with God and he was right beside you? You think you had, might be able to do a little skip? Mm. Maybe like playing hopscotch. Mm. I'm not going to do it. I know y'all hoping I will, but I'm not going to. And I don't want to fall down. Think of the walking with him. Think of the blessing and the love of God that was shed on him as he walked with him side by side. And the power that God put upon him so that he could continue that walk with him. And all the things that God did while Enoch was walking with him, God was pleased because he agreed with him 100%. Can't two walk together except they be agreed? Hey, God and Enoch walked together and they were agreed for 300 years. Some of us can't even make it two hours. But Enoch did. What a man of faith. It was his faith that allowed him to walk with God in that way. 
Some say, well, the only way he could have done that was live in a monastery. No. He had a home. He had a wife. He said he, that he lived 300 years, and in them 300 years, he begat sons, plural, and daughters, plural. I don't know how many of each he had, but evidently he had quite a few. I talked to a young preacher the other night. He said, my wife's pregnant again. I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, has anybody ever taken the time to sit down with you and told you how that can stop? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's number five, anyway. Five or six, I don't know how many times. He said, I want my quiver full. I said, you need to get a smaller quiver. <laughs> Not like carrying a knapsack on your back, son. He just went off laughing. I told him, I said, oh, God, bless that boy. He needs some help. But he's happy. I didn't get to see his wife because I was going to ask her if she's happy. It might be a different program right there. You know what I'm saying? I believe they are. He had an anointed ear to listen. Psalm 27, 8 tells us that. He had a heart full of love for God. You can read John 21, 15 when he asked Peter, Peter, love thou me more than these? Peter said, yes, Lord, I love you. I believe he had, if God asked him that every day of his life, he'd say, yes, Lord. I don't think he'd ever have a question about it. Peter said, Lord, you know that I love you. I don't think he would ever said that. He'd just say, yes, Lord, I know. I know you love me. Well, if I say that to you for the next 300 years, that's okay, I'll answer you the same way. Never a question about it. But Peter questioned the Lord. He said, Lord, why? You know I love you. Why do you keep asking me this? He said, Peter loves how many more than these. People she. Just trying to get him to identify with that. We need to be ready to obey him. He had the empowering Holy Spirit just as every believer did. Enoch did. The ending of the fellowship. How did Enoch's walk finish? His walk of faith in Genesis chapter 5. Go back there with me real quick. We'll be done here in a minute. Genesis chapter number 5. The Bible says in verse number 24, he that walked with God and he was not, for God took him. <coughs> Hebrews 11 and 5 says God translated him. Made the same word. It was a faint part of his fellowship that came to an end. Let me tell you this. The fellowship did not end. I'm going to kick one of these knobs all the way down. I'm so excited. The fellowship did not end. See, why is that, preacher? Because when he left here, he was walking by sight, by faith. So we walk by faith and not by sight. Well, all of a sudden, his walking by faith was gone, and his sight was revived. Can you imagine what it was like 300 years walking with God, and then all of a sudden you're, and you're standing there looking at him? Hallelujah! He just left this place and went to heaven. And the faith he had in God has continued right straight on. His faith became sight when he saw the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When he saw the God of the Lord Jesus Christ and died on the cross to save us by his marvelous grace. When he saw all that in heaven, he said, Glory to God, these have been the best 300 years I've ever spent. But now I'm here for eternity. Amen. God! Can you imagine what all that sarcastic family members said? Well, he must have got taken out of here by an airplane or something. Jet, you know, In Enoch's day? It's a long time. They didn't have no jets back then. They played in rode as a camel or a donkey. Maybe donkey took him out. I have no idea. He walked with God down here by faith in him. This will also be our experience one day. We may have to pass through the veil of death. As Paul said, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. 
what a day that will be. But my Jesus, I shall see. When I look upon this face, the one that saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. Glory to God. What a day, glorious day that's going to be. When you'd be walking around like this. Now, when you're driving, put it on shirt. Okay? Paul wrote this under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He said, I would hate being a brother concerning them which are asleep that you sorrow not, even as others have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so then also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord shall ascend from heaven with a shout, the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen. Amen. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called to meet the Lord there, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Then it says, verse 18, Wherefore, comfort one another of these words. I'm going to go find Enoch. And I'm going to go find Elijah. Because they're the only two that I know got translated out of here. I know God took Moses to heaven. I don't know exactly how he did it. But I know how them two got there. God, Elijah went up to chariot of fire. Can you imagine that? And Elisha's standing there going. He had no idea what was going on. And them prophets on the other side of the river, Jordan, they were standing over there looking too. Mouth wide open, eyeballs wide open. They had no idea what in the world was that that came out of the clouds and snatched him right off the earth. What was it? I believe it's the kind of glory of God I just took him on that of here. Well, then Elisha, he went back and slapped the water with the mantle, walked across. And them guys went crazy. They didn't know what the world was going on. But he asked God for a double portion of that prophet's power that God gave it to him. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians Chapter number 15. I'll be through here in a minute, but I'm just having a time. Now, if you want to go ahead and leave, you have yourself. But uh, I'm not leaving until I'm finished. First Corinthians chapter 15. I will be in a few minutes. I promise you. Verse 51 says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall all sleep, but we all be changed. In a moment, the twinkle of light, the last trump of the trump shall sound, the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal shall put on immortality. And then shall come to pass, O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of sin is death, is the law. Thanks be to God, which give us a victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, I'm thankful I've got a victory. I, I, I could, I, any day I want to, I can spit in the devil's eye. He, he may, I don't know what he may do to me, but he, I know he can't take me to hell. Amen. 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 Going to heaven one day. Enoch's translation is a picture of the rapture of the church Amen. all the way back in Genesis chapter number 5. Amen. Can you imagine if all the people back there all of a sudden got a hold of what happened to Enoch that he was translated and they, they got their Hebrew Bibles and started checking that out in the Hebrew and they found out that means rapture. And then rapture means taken out. They probably started, you know, they probably started getting excited back there in, maybe in chapter number six. I don't know. But here's a picture of what the Christians are going to have one day. Either in the ground or coming out. People are alive and remain to be called to meet the Lord there. Amen. Amen. What a day that'll be. Amen. What a day. Let me ask you a question. If Jesus calls this morning, are you going to heaven when he calls? Amen. Are you going? Do you know him? Either at death or 
ever in the rapture? If you don't know him this morning, can I tell you something? When you die, you go to hell. You go into a place called the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 20 says it's a place that burns with fire and brimstone. Matthew says it's a place where the worm dies not and the fire is not quenched. And you go there and you ain't getting out. We have a choice to make in this life. And that choice is what we do or do not do with Jesus Christ. If he becomes our Savior because we repent of our sin and trust him as a Savior of our soul, we're going to heaven. I've got that promise, and I've had that promise 52 years. Amen. God had promised me 52 years ago when I got saved, I was going to heaven. But I was also told if I didn't get saved, I was going to hell. Can I tell you something? That had nothing to do with me getting saved because the blessed Holy Ghost of God had already pinched me. That's right. And I knew what I wanted. I just didn't know how to express it to that fellow. And I thank God for a man that knew what it was to take a Bible and show a wicked sinner how to know Christ in his first way and to be saved by the grace of God that very night. I thank God for I don't know who he is. But I thank God for him. I'm going to shake his hand. He's going to be the second person I see when I get to heaven. I'm going to see Jesus first, and I'm going to say, where's that dude at? <laughs> He's going to direct me over to where that dude's at. He said, that's the dude that told you about me. I said, can we hug up here? I'm going to hug his neck. I just want to meet him again. I don't know where he is today. He said he was a missionary. <coughs> Had ten kids. <laughs> I, I hope he didn't go to one of the missionary Catholic countries because he's probably got 20 kids now. Four, I don't know. I just like to meet him and shake his hand. I just like to tell him, I want to thank you for not signing me up on a card until my name was written down. Then we put my name on. Is that all that's ever happened to you so much wrote your name on the card and said you're saved? I ain't saved. You need to know it. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Let me ask you this morning, Christian.
didn't get back in that right position with the Lord. We didn't come to that place where we tell him we're sorry. I repent of what I've been doing. I'm a sinner that needs to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Because I've not been faithful to you. I'm one of those Christians that got my ticket a long time ago. And I ain't doing nothing else. Shame on me. That's all I can say. Maybe there's somebody here this morning you've never been saved. You might be a church member. I don't know. You may just be somebody that attends church. You may be a member here. You may not be a member here. You may work in the church. I don't know. If you say, preacher, I'm not saved. If I die right now, I'd die and go to hell because I've never trusted Christ as my Savior. I've been playing church. I've been playing Christian. I'm a phony and I am a fake. I'm trying to be honest with you. And I'm trying to get honest with you. Because I know God wants you to be honest with Him. That's me, preacher. I'm a fake. I'm a fake Christian. Pray for me this morning. If you are, you need to be saved. Because you definitely ain't going to heaven. All I want to do is help you. I love everybody sitting in this building. All I want to do is help you. If you don't have a right relationship with the Lord, let's stand our feet with our heads bowed. Right when the song said, Just as I am, that's how I'm coming. Just as I am without one plea, that thy blood was shed for me. What about it? Oh, Lamb of God, I come. What about this morning? What about you, Christian? What do you need to do today? What do you need to turn over to the Lord? What do you need to surrender to Him? You come on. When God's dealing with your heart. You come on. No time like the present. You may walk out here today and say, Boy, I made down that one. You may not ever be able to get in, though. Somebody will tell you the truth because they love you. I may be hard sometimes, but I love you. That's the reason I'm telling you this. I don't see anybody go to hell, especially in this church. That's why I preach on salvation just about every week. I'll keep doing it.
And I pray, God, if anybody's come today and you know each heart in here that's not saved, I pray, Lord, the Holy Ghost of God would convict them where they couldn't leave until they talked to somebody about Jesus. And I'll thank you and praise you for what you do for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. I